Today I'm going to introduce you to the PicoScope 2000 series lab scopes. This one is a model 2204A, which is a very inexpensive two-channel scope that, with a few workarounds, can actually function as a very capable automotive lab scope. I'm going to show you how to set it up and use it so that you can get high quality waveforms and avoid damaging your scope by overvoltage. This scope uses the free PicoScope software that you can download from their website which I'll show you in just a minute. It's actually slightly different than the automotive PicoScope software that you may have used in the past. As you would expect from the price, it's not exactly the same as some of the more expensive PicoScopes, but overall I found that this scope can do just about everything that you'd want it to. Um, so let me point out a couple of the differences here so that you're aware. First, and this is very important, some PicoScopes, like this 4425 here, can handle input voltages of up to 200 volts without circuit damage. On the other hand, this 2204A is only rated for a maximum peak voltage of 20 volts. This is not very high. To get around this and to protect your scope, I would recommend that you purchase two attenuators, one for each channel. You can find these online for about $10 each. This one is a 20 to 1 attenuator. They also make 10 to 1 attenuators. This one reduces the input voltage by a ratio of 20 to 1. For example, if I'm measuring 20 volts at my leads, as this passes through the leads and through the attenuator, that voltage is reduced to only one volt. So only one volt enters the lab scope. This protects the scope from over voltage. Now personally, I would recommend that you always use attenuators whenever you're measuring voltage on this scope. Don't measure voltage without one. This way you'll prevent ruining your scope. Of course, if you're measuring with a, a current probe or some other type of a sensor or transducer, you're not measuring voltage directly and you don't need attenuators when doing that. Now let me point out a couple of the other differences. This scope has substantially less memory and bandwidth than the more expensive scopes, which means that in most cases your sample rate will be lower. It's like having a camera that has lower megapixels. However, PicoScopes in general are really, really fast devices, so even this scaled down model, the scaled down version, should be more than adequate for most of the things that we're going to do. Okay, so now that we're familiar with the scope, let's talk about how to set up the software and how to use it. Now the software that runs this 2204A scope is different than the automotive software. It has to be software that you get directly from picotech.com. So go to that website, picotech.com, and click on Downloads. You come over here and get this latest stable version of PicoScope 6, whatever the latest version is. Click on that, download it, and install it. It'll take a couple of minutes. Once you do, you'll see this icon appear. This is different than the PicoScope 6 automotive icon. Again, this software that we've used here will not work on this other scope. So we'll open this, and you'll notice as it opens, that it looks exactly the same as the other software. It's virtually no different. The only differences you'll see are that there is not an automotive tab up here. In the PicoScope automotive software, there's an automotive tab that has a bunch of presets in it. I really don't recommend those presets, so it doesn't hurt us to not have that. The other thing that you'll notice that is different is that some of the probes that are preloaded into the automotive software are not here. There are several probes that are still here, but for example, there is no attenuator, there is no 600 amp current probe that comes pre-installed into the software, but that's not a problem because it's actually really easy to create our own probes, and I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. And it's not very hard to export the probes from the automotive software and import them into this software. So again, that's not an issue. Otherwise, this program operates exactly the same way as the program that we're used to with the automotive scopes. Now, I'm going to quickly run through the four steps for setting up a scope again. I know that I've taught these in other videos, but these four steps are critical if you want to set up a scope and successfully get the waveform you're looking for. So step number one is always choose your probe. So we come over here to the channel that we're going to use and select the probe that we're going to use. If we're going to use voltage, and in this case, I recommended that you always use an attenuator, you can create an attenuator probe, or if you have a 20 to 1 attenuator, just choose this times 20 probe. And that will multiply whatever voltage is coming through the attenuator into the scope by 20, 
and so it'll actually read the actual voltage that you're that you're measuring right here on your screen again. If you have a 10 to 1 attenuator, of course, choose the times 10 probe. If you're going to be measuring current with a current clamp or using any other sensor, choose that probe. If it's not here, we'll have to create or import the probe that we need. Okay, so that's step one, choose your probe. Step two is to come over here now and choose the range that you want. Now this range will be based upon the probe that we chose, so you always have to choose the probe first. If I chose a current clamp as my probe, these range options would be in amps. Now let's say I'm going to be measuring voltage on an automotive system, so it's about a 12 volt system, so this plus or minus 12 volt range should be sufficient. Okay, now step three is to choose the time base. Now by default, the time base is usually going to be in milliseconds or in microseconds, and generally that's not what we want. Sometimes we do when we're measuring very fast things, such as a CAN bus, but generally we're going to want to actually come down here in this bottom section and measure in seconds per division. So maybe five seconds per division, which means it would take five seconds for this cursor to cross each of these grid lines or each of these divisions, which means I would be recording for 50 seconds. And that's one way to look at it is how long do I need to record for to capture this waveform. So that's step three is choose your time base and usually choose it in seconds. Now step four is one that gets skipped a lot. Step four is to increase your requested sample rate. Right here, and again I have a separate video that's going to explain what sample rate or number of samples are, but here's where I request the number of samples that I want. I would recommend you hold your mouse button down and let that climb as high as it can. Max it out at two giga samples. Now you probably won't get two giga samples. You can see your actual sample rate over here. I would recommend that unless you're planning to export or do something special with your data that you're collecting, you always request the highest sample rate that is possible. So those are the four steps for setting up the scope, and if you use those four steps, you shouldn't have any problems getting the waveform that you're looking for. I hope this has helped. I wanted to just introduce you to this 2204A lab scope and show you how to set it up and get started using it. I hope that you enjoy it and have a lot of fun capturing your waveforms.